I've got the hold and the delay up just for the high pass cutoff. Check out how this sounds. It's like a splashy little filter sweep. Stick with me and I'll share a bunch of tips on how to make the most of LA modern percussion. We all know LA Modern Percussion has some of the best samples out there. They're some of the best engineered samples that you will find on the market today. Really well recorded, a lot of thought went into it, but it can be a little intimidating and you might be a little disappointed if you expected it to sound like a blockbuster right out of the box and you pressed a few keys and it didn't quite meet those expectations. This video is to help you make the most out of LA Modern Percussion after you buy it. We're going to talk about split versus standard velocity, room 4, the align feature, the transient shaper, and the AHDSR. I'm also going to show you how I use a gate to only gate the low end in some cases. We're going to talk about note interruption, reminders about the pitch wheel, and more. Before we get going, I was working on this ADSR and I noticed the high pass cutoff is up halfway here and I've got the hold and the delay up just for the high pass cutoff. Check out how this sounds. It's like a splashy little filter sweep. These are the toms and bass drums, single instruments. <laughs> Pretty cool. This video is going to focus mostly on the master patches. The folders can be a little difficult to navigate. First of all, SI is single instrument, ENS is ensemble. So when you've got the ENS, you've got a group of players, single instrument, very simple. There's standard velocity for both single instrument and ensemble, and there's split velocity for single instrument and ensemble. I've got both of them loaded up here. What is standard velocity? If you've got two keys mapped next to each other, like this here, I could press both of these keys back to back and trigger the same sample over and over and over. Or I can put them in a MIDI, uh, you know, in a, in a sequencer, set them to the same velocity and trigger the same sample over and over and over, getting that machine gun effect that we try to avoid if I use standard velocity. But if I use split velocity, there's no way if I hit every other key every time that I'm going to trigger the same sample over and over. I'm always going to be triggering a different sample at a slightly different velocity because the left key, in this case C, is mapped to half of the samples, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And the other key, in this case D, is mapped to the other set of samples, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so forth. So no matter how many times I play them back to back, I'm always going to be triggering different velocity layers when you're using split. So if you play with alternating keys like I do, you're going to want to probably choose split most of the time. The next thing that I wanted to mention is room four. Of all of these, if you're looking for the biggest sound or the biggest kind of most exaggerated, epic-y, over, overdone sound, I decided that I like room four the best. So I almost always start out with room four. Now the first thing you noticed that got changed when I uploaded room four was this align feature. And maybe you didn't notice it, but here I am pointing it out. If I reset to the beginning, all right, when you reset the patch, all of the mic positions are aligned naturally. So the further mics are aligned as they would have heard the sound. When I load room four, one of the things that's happening is the alignment of those mics that are further away are being transient shifted earlier in time so that they are hitting your ears through the speakers at the same time that the close mics heard the sound. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the long, 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 long tails on some of these drums. And if you go to the effects and just pull sustain down, you get a very weird kind of um, result. 
And in fact, it doesn't even pull it down very much. Now, I made another video which worked with a gate to only gate the low end of those so that you could have some of the resonance and the mid-tones and low-mids re remain, but just filter out the, the sub-frequencies and the low frequencies to clean up your mix a little bit if you wanted. Basically creating a whole new tail on uh, this long drum. And you're done. But there's a better choice, and it is using the AHDSR. So many of us are familiar with ADSRs. The H just stands for hold. You need to pull that down a bit, pull the decay down a bit, and this is going to be one of your main uh, controls in the in the end. And pull the sustain. I'm going to just pull it down all the way up because I I want the decay to choose how long my uh, longer epic hits are going to last. And whoa, it's gone because decay is right around here. I wanted it a little longer, I can make them go up here. If I want it a little shorter, I can pull it back to here. <laughs> Unnaturally short. So you've got um, a lot of control there. You can also leave a little bit of sustain in. So this is useful if I want to use these punchy bass drums with room four, but without having those really long ring outs. That's just really long. Another thing is this note interruption button. And I tend to want to clean up my kind of action cues. I tend to want to keep this on, meaning I'm interrupting each note. Even though it sounds a little unnatural, because I like to have those impacts really sharp and the drum sounds really clean in a busy mix. But that's something that you're gonna to wanna to play around with. You may want them to overlap. Another cool thing to point out is the pitch wheel actually does something with these drums. When was the last time you played with the pitch wheel on your drum set? By default, this patch is only set for one semitone. But I'm going to move the pitch wheel up and down as I play these and check out the differences. You can change how much it's set to, of course. Definitely a cool feature. In case you didn't know, this eye does actually present pretty good information about each of the pages. As you're moving through the interface, you can click it to learn about all the controls. I kept looking for a manual for a while and then I realized it was built in. So there you go. Don't Google it, just click the eye button. If you don't understand something that's on there, leave a comment in this video and I'll try to get back to you. All right, enjoy and write some awesome percussion with LA Modern Percussion.